Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the technical forum of the Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries. I'm very happy to see the technical forum full already of uh, the audience, who, but I see, still see some empty uh, places. So if you would like to join the next presentation here in our forum, please take your seat. We have uh, something to drink for you, coffee, tea or beverages, whatever you like. So uh, you can follow the next presentation, which will be all about medium and heavy duty vehicles and especially fuel cell technology for them. I'm very happy to have the president and CEO of US Fuel Cell Corporation with me today. It's uh, Dr. Abbas Godazi, and he will talk about fuel cell technology and products for medium and heavy duty vehicles, operation experience and reliability. Very looking forward to that presentation. Mr. Godazi, please go ahead. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And good afternoon to you. Uh, uh, my name is Abbas Kudarzi. I'm the president of US uh, Fuel Cell. I would be um, giving you a briefing of the uh, experience we have had with the fuel cells for the commercial vehicles operation for six years. Um, US Fuel Cell, basically there's a group of companies, US Hybrid, US Fuel Cell, and Mag Motor. US Hybrid is the parent company, Powertrain, U.S. fuel cell is focused on the fuel cell engine, and uh, a fuel cell engine is a component of the zero emission powertrain, really. That was the whole idea behind being involved with it, and I'll give you more detail on it. And of course, the Mag Motor Group is also electronic with the servos, uh, which does not apply quite a bit, but uh, it's a group of companies here. The other way, <clears throat> the company focuses on commercial vehicles, medium and heavy duty, which means roughly about 10 ton. The biggest vehicle we have done is 120 ton fuel cell. 120 ton. So that's why you will see a different picture of vehicles that we are dealing with. We have been doing fuel cell vehicles since 2002. We deploy them at 2002. And the funny thing is, the first vehicle is a 20 kilowatt fuel cell. Eh, lifetime for that thing was about 300 hours. 300 hours, but we learned the lesson well, and we learned the limitations of a technology. Number one, we learned the limitation of the system issues. We learned the limitations of the operation issues, and we carried on. Then. We have been involved with providing balance of plants. That's our major know-how, how we started the company. I have been working on electric vehicle since uh, almost, uh, yeah, 1980. We produced about 260 of them, way back. And then I had the pleasure to lead uh, the um, General Motors EV1 powertrain. That was my responsibility. So learned a lot about system and learned a lot about balance of system and got to into a bigger and bigger platform. When UTC provided the power plant, we did most of the balance of plant for that. And then in 2013, three years ago, UTC did, decided to divest. That's when we decided to actually consider the fuel cell engine to be an element of the powertrain. And we have two products. A fuel cell engine, not APU, not this, not that, not power plant, but just engine. And that's what I'm going to focus on of 80 kilowatt and 150 kilowatt. 80 kilowatt fuel cell would pretty much do all the trucks, transit buses, and the buses and other specialty vehicles such as refuse trucks and so on and so. 150 kilowatt is more for articulated and a lot of heavy marine application, which I will not get to here. And fundamentally, people are familiar with the hybrid electric. And now the electric, the plug-in hybrid, then the battery electric, and then we get into the fuel cell electric. Now, 
the passenger vehicle, when somebody says my vehicle does about 300 miles or 450 kilometers, 460 kilometers, it means half the weight of that vehicle is battery and half of it is the rest of the vehicle. When it comes to commercial vehicles, you do not have that luxury. We cannot simply trade payload with the weight. So there is a limitation with how much weight we can carry. So therefore, instead of storing the energy into electron in terms of battery, it is better to go with the fuel cell. It has more energy content to give you the, the, the 300 and the 450 kilometers range that you need. That's really fundamentally why we believe that the fuel cell has its own market. And the refueling time is important, especially for commercial vehicles, at which you have a vested product that cannot be uh, parked during its charge time and so on and so. So the system is pretty much the same. This one happens to be a battery dominant fuel cell. This is for the uh, 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 transit agency called Sunline uh, Transit in um, uh, Palm Spring or Coachella Valley. But uh, it's one way to bring the cost down a little bit. All right? But going forward, the same thing applies with these shuttle buses and the step one. We have deployed quite a bit of this. And the last batch we deployed actually was into Volcano National Park in Hawaii. And oh, there's a minor difficulty. At about uh, 1,000 meter elevation, there is a high concentration of sulfur we had to deal with. So anyway, and this is the most recent vehicle that we provided to US Air Force. This is a pushback tug. It is to pull the C-17, which is bigger than 747 and Airbus 380. So quite a bit of uh, pull power, quite a bit of force. So the issue of the fuel cell vehicle is no longer about power, it's no longer about torque, it's no longer about is it doable. So when we talk about demonstration, it's not about the technology demonstration, it's about the cost of the technology, the cost of procurement, purchase, and the cost of operation. That's really what we are doing. We are trying to quantify that. So when we tell the customer, here is the economic benefit you get from this technology, along with the environmental benefit. Believe it or not, I am from California, I live in California, nobody will pay for environment. So they say take it as a granted thing. But of course, hopefully our policymakers would be able to enforce such that our environment is somewhat protected, all right? Given that, fuel cell, we have as a fuel cell supply industry, we have not done a good job. We have made fuel cell to be too complicated. We have made it to be too much a space age. Fuel cell is just another engine, and I will go through that, explain that to you. But please keep in mind, there is an agreement among all automakers that the future propulsion, the future traction is electric. That is given. Now, the question is the energy source. Some may say, oh, it's a diesel engine generator. Some may say, oh, it's a natural gas generator. Some may say, oh, no, the batteries will be so cheap, and they're going to be able to store this energy, that energy. And we believe to be hydrogen. That's our business. However, given that, then fuel cell is just another engine that is output is a direct electric power. All we are doing in the case of a lithium ion, it's got a cathode, it's got an anode, it's got a separator. We extract or store in terms of ionic. Whereas in the case of fuel cell, we exchange proton to extract the electron. That, that's simple. It's not really that complicated. Now let's talk about it. We take the hydrogen in, 
it goes through the so-called fuel processing unit. This is a sophisticated name. That's what we make. It is actually nothing but injectors. It's less complicated because we only have one injector. It's got a couple more functions. It has air. We call them air processing unit. It's nothing but a compressor, turbocharger, pump, whatever you want to call it. Then it goes into the cell stack. That is our know-how. That's what we make. It's got a cathode and anode. It is of combustion. We go through electron extraction through proton exchange membrane. Call that a cylinder and call this thing engine block. Of course, we have another unit, it's called thermal management system, which is nothing but the radiator, but of course it's a sophisticated radiator, okay? This particular power plant, it is freeze capable. It means it can be at minus 30 degrees Celsius and self-start. It will not be damaged, whereas most of the existing commercial fuel cells that you have, if you don't plug it in, you will ruin it. If for some reason that bus or that truck is stuck in the middle of a road and you cannot get it out into a de uh, service depot in time, it will be damaged. But this is not. That is a very, very big element that we have put in there. But of course, that forms a fuel cell. But the fuel cell, they talk about too much about voltage, current, curve, polarization, this and that. Electronics is integrated. That's why we call this integrated, is electronic is integrated. Our job is to make the fuel cell to be installed, controlled, commanded, and serviced just like an engine. It's got an engine mount, just like an engine. It can handle the same shock and vibration that an engine takes directly to the axle. And it can be serviced all the critical components around it. So you don't have to open this box and think of a box. So we are making the fuel cell to be as simple as an engine. Going forward, of course, you have the critical element of advanced GDL and all this blah, 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 which means one thing, life. How many hours? What is the life of this product? That is what we do. And of course, the modular design so we be able to support other multiple customers. Most importantly, all the control is embedded into the product. So the customer, the end user, does not have to hire a lot of engineers to learn how to use fuel cell. So really, that's why we have all of these functions integrated, so it's ease of the vehicle integration. That is the key point. As an industry, we have to make our product to be simple to use and robust. Robust means what? Means if the end user made a mistake, we do not just say, oh, sorry, that was your fault, okay? We have to have that intelligence built into the unit. And of course, most importantly, this fuel cell, you use the same diagnostic equipment as you use for the engine, it's J1939. So I do not have to have this computer's laptop, this and that. How much time do I have? Two more minutes. That means I gotta fa fa talk fast. All right. This is the actual load profile on this engine. It's not friendly. This is Oakland, Healy. Okay. This is the speed percentage versus time. This is the actual battery and battery and power fuel cell. What I'm trying to show you is that the fuel cell power in this battery is much more demanding. It's not a friendly application. It is the nastiest, worst application. Given that, we are at 22,500 hours. We have 13 buses, 
the leading bus has 22,500 hours, zero failure. The next one is around 19,000 hours. So it's not one or two bus, it's 13 buses. And I still have 94% of power available. And guess what? All the protection system work as they were designed. There has not been a single incident of what we call failures, catastrophic failure, at which it puts the riders in any kind of danger at all. This is most important. When we started this, there was a fear people might not ride this bus because they would be afraid. Now, the customers actually wait for this bus. We have achieved a lot. We have quantified how much it cost. We have quantified how to maintain it. And we have quantified it and user like it. Now, this bus is 100% serviced by the transit agency. We train them. We don't touch it anymore. It's 100% maintained by the same technician, same staff who maintains a natural gas engine or a diesel engine. This is very, very important. We have to make it easy. We have to build customer confidence, both our customer, the operator, and their customer, the user. And this is the most important graph. 2013, we took over this project. The main indicator of the transit agencies is miles before road call. How many miles before this bus is not functioning? They have to call somebody or some other bus to come in. It was at 10,000 hours. The power plants are three years older, yet we have doubled that. We have a scheduled maintenance. We know what needs to be done, but we do it as a scheduled maintenance. So the quality of service is up there, but the cost of it is there, and it costs less to do a preventive maintenance than it is to fail on the road, because when you fail on the road, you compromise the quality. This is the most important factor, in my opinion. This is what gives the customers more desire to order more as they are doing. And I don't want to go too much on this thing. When we compare the hydrogen versus natural gas versus battery, the wheel to well to wheel, I'll go through that later, but fundamentally, it's more efficient. And the cost. If you don't know much about it, forget about it. You don't need to know much about it. One kilogram of hydrogen gives you similar service about 30 seconds, gives you similar service of two gallons of diesel or two and a half gallons of gasoline. Now you can compare the cost of hydrogen to the cost of petroleum, and you see whether your operational cost is lower or higher. If your operational cost is lower, you'd be able to regain or recover your capital cost. Otherwise, it would be added cost. And of course, this is the uh, most recent project we have to do the fuel cell ranging standard with the project with the Nissan for a utility company. And with that, I thank you. And I'd be glad to try to address a question you may have. Thank you very much, Dr. Godazi. Thank you. Such a gifted speaker, I would like to say. Uh, it was very, very excellent presentation. But unfortunately, I can nothing but uh, to advise you to uh, visit uh, Mr. Godazi at his booth, which is just uh, behind that wall over there, C34-1, because uh, we are waiting our next speaker right here in our technical forum, uh, which will also speak about fuel cell buses. I would like to ask you, Mr. Godazi, if you are already uh, also in uh, some, some off-road vehicles, Heavy, fuel, uh, heavy vehicles in mind, but we will discuss that later at your booth. Thank you very much for being it's here, and pleasure. one more big hand for Mr. Godazi. Thank you very much. If you wish to have a copy of the presentation, give me your card. I'd be more than happy to provide it to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Goodbye.
Yeah, just a minute pause and when we uh, continue with our next uh, topic here at uh, 12.40 about fuel cell buses, a solution to meet zero emission regulations for transit agencies. Uh, Jan Laperche-Riteau will talk here for the Chief Business Development Director of Ballot Power Systems Incorporated. <laughs> 